Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Hope we're all well. Um, yeah, it's been a it's been a mad twenty four hours actually. I don't know if you guys have been living under a rock, but if you have, I've got some news. Um, potential new owners. That's, it's that's mad to say. It is honestly mad to say. You know, I think we're all sort of gotten to a point where we are, you know, Enik out and Levy out. Um, it. <sighs> It's always something that we've wanted as owners to splash the cash, you know, spending 200, 250 mil on a, on a, on a budget for a window, you know, and, and spanking it all on sort of three or four really unreal players. Um, it's not the like that, if I'm honest, guys. So I think a lot of people are getting gassed, like, look, oh my God, look at this money that might come in. It, I thought it's not like that. So to give you a bit of a background story, QSI, Qatari Sports Investment, um, that's that's the team that you know want to take a minority stake in Spurs. Now, if you don't exactly know who they are, they're the guys that basically run PSG. So they've obviously got a lot of money, happy to spend it, but this is more of an investment than anything else uh, because according to UEFA, they can only actually buy Tottenham outright majority stake as long as. They don't have PSG on their books because they find that if these two teams would come up against one another in a European competition, it could be detrimental to the uh, the competition itself. So that's the reason as to why UEFA won't. But they don't mind a minority stake, apparently. I don't know how it all works personally, but look, I'd love new owners. I really would. Um, but it also, it, you know, a lot of reports. This has been like the big story, you know, um, a lot of reports just saying, <clears throat> that Daniel Levy's probably speaking to two to three other consortiums. So clearly he's been reaching out for investment. Um, it's something that we desperately, desperately need is we need in a cash injection because if we want to continue to keep up with the big boys and we want to continue to sort of climb the table and bridge the gap, we need to spend money. Um, you know, we're, we're, a week in, we're over a week into this window. What's going on? You know, Liverpool signed Gakpo. Chelsea have signed Jao Felix and they signed a centre-half. United at least at least in links and heavy links to talk to people. Um, I know it's only weak work course, but it, it's something, you know. Uh, City is not obviously a massive concern. They've already got a massive squad of unbelievable players. Um, but you, you'll find that Arsenal will strengthen a bit, you know. You, you'll see that Newcastle will strengthen. You'll see any team that's in the top half look to strengthen because I think, look, we might be able to get European football this year. Let's not leave it to the thirty first of January, shall we? Let's let's get something done ASAP. You know, we've got so many difficult fixtures coming up in the next six weeks. We desperately need we desperately need bodies. Um so speaking of bodies, speaking of players, Pedro Porro is the main one, but also this is all from ports in Portugal, Marcus Edwards. Okay. Obviously, played against these boys a couple of times this season. Both played very well against Spurs. Marcus Edwards obviously scoring in the one-all fixture at home. Um, reports a £75 million double deal, okay, uh, which doesn't really surprise me all that much, to be honest. Apparently, we're in, we're in that ballpark. So if, this, if these reports are true, which obviously I'm not going to say they are or they aren't, if these reports are true, that is a deal that should be done within the next sort of a week. I mean, Liverpool act with efficiency. Chelsea act with efficiency, uh, with efficiency. United don't, obviously. But we don't. And we really could. If we, you know, if, we, if we're haggling over a couple of million, it's, it's not really worth it, you know. Um, we desperately need the right wing back. We all see it, you know. I think Jed Spence even looks at Emerson when he plays and realises, how the hell am I ever going to get this team? Because not in a good way, but more so in a bad way, that if he can't get ahead of him, when is he ever going to get ahead of him? You know, Emerson's not been good this season. Um, in terms of Marcus Edwards, he does remind me a little bit of Brian Hill, a little bit, a little bit of Kulisevsky, I'd say, because actually, left footed, plays on the right, cuts in a lot, uh, quite tricky, quite quick. Uh, obviously, I really thought he was unbelievable against us in the Champions League, but is he too much like Brian Hill? Is he is he an upgrade over Brian Hill? I don't know. I think Brian's been really good the last few games. Actually added a real breath of fresh air that we desperately needed in the squad. Um, I don't know. But helps with the homegrown player situation, which I've talked about loads of other videos. So, again, that's not a bad thing, if you think about it. Would it be good? Well, do you know what? It's two added bodies into the squad that, you know, we could probably really do with, if I'm honest. 
Um, you know, I don't think that should be the be-all and end-all that we go and get those two and then we're done for the window. Not at all. I think we still need two, two maybe three more. Um, you know, that is with Emerson going out, maybe Tanganga going out, you know, maybe... Uh, well, I don't really know else, but may maybe Lucas Moura going, you know. What I would say is the centre mid area looks pretty weak, you know. I thought Pape Matasar, by the way, last few games has been unreal. But I think Skip looks well off the pace, like mahusively off the pace. And I think he's a good player, but when we're struggling already, we don't need players to come in who are off the pace. We need players to come in who are just going to absolutely smash it, like Saar has done. You know, Basuma has been off the pace all year, you know. It shows there's a level between Bentoncourt and everyone else. I think it goes Bentoncourt, drop a few feet. There's Hoiberg, drop multiple more feet, and there's the rest of them. Bentoncourt being fit is literally everything. So we desperately need some quality in the Central Park. Um, you know, I know Ben Jacobs talks a lot about how you know we're really keen on Madison as well. Unbelievable player, but if we can't spend money. Anyway, because we, we, we're cash-strapped and we've got £100 million pounds worth of debt due to the stadium, which pays for itself, why would we spend £60 million on James Madison? I think he's a baller, but what, would we spend that money really on him? I, I highly doubt it. He would suit the system. He would suit the team. You know, you could play him in a 3-5-2. You can play him as, a, as an attacking option of the three. But are we going to do it? I don't think so. It would be a summer move at best. You know, they're already talking about Gavardio and Bastoni for the summer. We're not getting Gavardio. If we're getting either, it would be Bastoni. And do you know what? Either one would do very, very nicely. We need him. Anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. Just a short one. Just a little quick update. Hopefully, we get some investment soon. Hopefully, we start bloody buying players. We've got a massive couple of weeks coming up. But anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. Drop a like, drop a comment, subscribe, bell notification, all that jazz. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, boys.